Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave For You. Today's question comes from Bruce, AC1BM. Interesting question. He says, I have a purely academic question here. There's no such thing as purely academic, but we'll, we'll go with the flow here. I think the answer is going to be no, it wouldn't work, but I'll ask anyway. Well, before we jump into this, and the question has to do with using DC in transformers, the answer is no, but uh, let's take a look at how we get there. It says, in a vehicle with dual 12-volt DC batteries, that's got to be some vehicle, wired in parallel, so it's two 12-volt batteries in parallel gives you 12 volts out. If you wired a one-to-one -one isolation transformer to each battery, and then wired the outputs of the transformers in series, could you safely produce 24 volt DC while protecting the 12 volt DC on the other side of the transformers? The key thing that we've got to talk about here is transformers work on AC, on alternating current. They don't work on direct current. So let's look at the whiteboard and see if we can figure out why. So what he has here is some sort of a vehicle with two separate 12 volt batteries and these are wired together in parallel like this this goes to the chassis ground okay and here is your 12 volt now the advantage to this is if you've got a very large engine to start or something like that you you can make this uh, work now what he wants to do is wire in a transformer your heart's in the right place, just we're using the wrong device. If you take a battery, just a battery, let's just take any old battery, and run it through a coil, and then back to the battery, what do we have here? This has got some number of coils are marked on schematic diagrams as L, L1, L2, and so on. Now, if we remember the curve, for the impedance of an inductance. This is frequency, and this right up here is your inductive reactance. It's a straight line curve. If you think the curve's coming down like this, you're thinking of capacitors. This is inductors, and note what the resistance is at the origin, at zero frequency, which is DC up into the AC. The answer is that L equals zero. What you really have is a straight line short through that thing right there. And you will sit there and one of several things will happen. You will, if the wires are strong enough, well, usually on most automobile type batteries they are, and you'll get very large currents coming through this wiring enough to actually burn out the wires, possibly start a fire. Okay, so that won't work. Just a simple isolation transformer. Let's talk about what an isolation transformer is. An isolation transformer is when you, and it's usually got some kind of core other than air, and you put 120 VAC here, and you can get, say, 120 VAC here, but note that uh, direct current or very near direct current, low frequency pulses and so on, won't go through here, but this is at 60 hertz. By the way, if the transformer is used like in an airplane, it's 400 hertz because then it can be much smaller. When you get up to RF, you only need a couple turns and usually you put a toroidal core in there. Okay, so the idea is to isolate this. Now you can, if you want to, take two isolation transformers and over here one and we'll put the core in there and we wire this to this, this to this, this to the source and this to the source. Okay. What you're going to get out, if they're one-to-one, -one, you'll get 120 and 120. Now note that it is isolated. You can go like this, 
and have 240 volts out there like that. Does that work? Yes, absolutely that works. Okay, normally you would buy a single transformer that would do that job. But now let's go back to what you can do. And there are uh, DC to DC converters that will take 12 in and 24 out. And you've got other DC, these are different, so you can't swap them here. And we'll take 24 in and 12 out. These are DC to DC. Now, I, I, I want to just note here what a DC to DC converter is. It comes in with line voltage and um, basically something that switches it on and off very rapidly about 50 kilohertz or so. And there's a coil here, which is very small, because now we're dealing with 50 kilohertz. And another coil right here. And you've got a full wave rectifier here, filtering and so on. And out comes 12 volts. This is 120 VAC. This is a switching power supply, obviously greatly simplified. Now, the switching power supply is what we all have in our ham shacks. A few of us have the older ones, but all mine are switching or battery. Okay. Now, let's see if we can find you such a device. Okay, what we see on this uh, image from Amazon is a, a series by this company of various DC to DC converters. So uh, you can convert 12 volts to 24. This is the one circled and whew, the thing's less than $40. Uh, you can't get transformers and stuff like that for that amount of money. And you wouldn't want to anyway, because these take DC as an input and provide DC at an output at a separate voltage. A, a one that provides a higher voltage is called a boost converter. And one that provides a lower output voltage is called a buck converter just like a deer buck. They do make them that can go either up or down called buck boost or boost buck, depending on what you're reading. So this is the way to go. If you want to get that uh, 24 volts output that you need for whatever project you're working on, just use one of these converters. I use one that looks very, very similar to this for my solar charge controller. So Anyway, there, I think, is the real answer to your question. If you get one of these DC to DC converters, it'll solve the problem that you have. Now, I want you to notice these are all three terminal devices. The black wire on these, on each one, is connected to the other black wire. So you're not isolating anything. If you want, you can put like ferrite beads around it to keep something from propagating. But note that that black wire would be attached to your chassis and attached to your ground and all of that sort of thing to help keep the noise off of it. But these things do work. They're inexpensive. You can get just about any voltage ratio that you want. And it's not very expensive at all. So there you have it. I hope that helped answer your question. For those of you who have watched this far in the video, I think you must like it. If that's the case, please subscribe. Punch the notification button and share this. Tell somebody else about the channel. So until we next meet, 73.